Good morning, you all. It's um, scripture reading time, and I like to think of this one as that time Jesus trash talked the devil. Um, it was a little rap battle in the wilderness, um, and uh, this is what it sounds like. This is from Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Obviously. Uh, the tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. And Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you're the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it's written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All of this I will give to you, he said, if you will just bow down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then the devil left him. And the angels came and attended him. So I confess to both Carla and Jeremy that I was absolutely and totally lost last service when I tried to preach. <laughs> I didn't know where I was coming or going. <laughs> so I just winged it. Um, <laughs> and what's terrible is we, we didn't see any difference. <laughs> I'm not sure how to interpret that. So, um, I'm sorry, Jeremy, but she read the scripture a lot better than you did. So it's like, I could follow that. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you go. Um, so the, the, the uh, theme that I was assigned to today, and then I saw the passage, the theme is resolve. And, and uh, like that can go several ways. Uh, 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 to resolve something means to you know, come to an agreement or whatever. But, I, but that's not what it is. This resolve is to be determined. I have resolve. So that's what this is all about. And, and uh, when you put the passage and the word resolve together, you naturally just come to the conclusion that Jesus was really determined not to give in to Satan. But the way she read it, and it, it was almost like he was playing with Satan, like, seriously, that's all you got? You know, it's, it's, so, it, so the resolve, I don't think, had to do with resisting temptation. I, had to, I think resolve has to do with something else, and we're going to get to that. This sermon has three points. It's sacred. Yeah, four, five, no, three, yes. Sacred. So um, the first one comes from Pastor Laura. We met in teaching team. And, and uh, so I, I shared a few of my thoughts, and she said, have you, have you stopped to think about the context of this, this event? I was like, oh, no, I haven't. And so she unfolded that for me, and I thought, okay, so that's where we have to start. If you read the Gospel of Matthew and you see where this fits, it, uh, after this, he entered his ministry. So we see what comes after this, but do you remember what comes before it? It's the baptism of Christ. So John baptizes him, and there's this thing that comes together at that moment that you're just like, oh, my gracious. Because this voice from the Father comes from heaven, and it's like, that's my boy. <laughs> Could you imagine hearing that? Could you imagine hearing that? That's my boy. I'm proud of him. And Jesus is just soaking this in. I don't know, nobody knows when he first realized who he was. 
You know, at, at three months old, Jesus didn't know he was the son of God. When did, when did he figure it out? When did it come? Well, what it, it whenever it became clear to him, it never was any more clear than at that moment right then. This is my boy. I'm proud of him. Listen to this guy. And then, of course, the spirit came in the form of a dove. So this event that we're talking about today is sandwiched between three years of, of up and down ministry. I mean, he spit at, ultimately crucified, but there's some wonderful things that happened as well. So this three years of ministry, meaningful ministry, productive ministry, world-changing ministry, world-changing ministry. And, and before this is this divine pronouncement, this is my boy, I'm proud of him. So he finds himself smack dab in the middle. I'm going to take this a different place than I did the first sermon. First time I preached it. I think that, and I talked about this Ash Wednesday, but I think that when we're conceived, when we're born, God goes absolutely crazy. Because he's, because I, I think he says, there will never be anybody ever think about him saying this with your name on it. There will never be another person that I'll be able to love like I love this person. And there will never be another person who will love me back the way this person loves me. Think about that. Put your name on that. And he is absolutely giddy about it. Absolutely giddy. We may not hear a voice from heaven and we may not find a, have a dove to send, but that's in reality what happens when we enter this world. It may take a while to realize that. In fact, I think it takes most of us way too long to realize that. But that's how we get started. And then we go through this wilderness period called L-I-F-E. And there are different phases to it. You know, there's puberty. Who thought that up? You know, there's, there's college. You know, you go freshman year, sophomore year. My father reminded me of what the word sophomore means. Do you know what it means? Wise fool. Yeah. So we go through our wise foolery. We know it all, but we know nothing. And then we become parents, and we, then we realize we know nothing. And then they become teenagers, and it's like, where did this come from? You know what I'm saying? And then, so we have these phases in life, and it can feel like a wilderness. It can feel like, it can feel like an absolute wilderness. And, and one of the ways you can, you can uh, interpret the word that's used there is that Jesus was tempted, but the other word is tested. That he, that he, you know, and, and so the example we use in Pathway all the time is you never know what's in a sponge until you squeeze it. So who, what is Jesus made of? Well, we're not quite sure yet. He's not been squoes, <laughs> you know? And, and so, and so th he's, all of a sudden we see him squeezed. If 40 days without food is not a squeeze, I don't know what it is. It's, it, you know, and in the wilderness to beat all. And so that's where a lot of us find them, ourselves is in this wilderness period. And sometimes it comes and goes. You know, it's not like 40 days of endless monotony. It's We have our ups and downs. We get promotions and we get fired. And we have good kids and we have kids that don't like to be good. I, I don't know how to say that. but or They're not cooperative with the idea of good. No matter how much you introduce it to them. It's like, nah, I don't want to do that. Um, so so our wilderness has its ups and downs. And and so it, it dawned on me as I looked at this temptation that it's threefold. Everything good comes in threes. So it's threefold. This was actually a good temptation because it really, yeah, we really learn about ourselves from it. I wake up, I think everybody does, wakes up every day and, and not in a spoken way, but in an unconscious, subconscious way, we want three guarantees for that day. I want the guarantee that I'll live. I want the guarantee that I matter to somebody, especially God. And I want the guarantee that I matter to this world, that I actually make some sort of difference here. That's what these three temptations are about. Will I live? 
you know, I'm starved to death. Will I live? Do I matter to God? If I jump, will he catch me? I mean, that was Satan's perspective, not Jesus. And the, and the third one is this power thing. Some of, I look at life as a heap, and some of us want to just kind of be part of the heap, and others of us, we want a, a more important role in the heap, and some of us want to be on top of the heap. You know, just, just we're all made differently. But the idea, I want some sort of purpose, power, significance, oomph to my life, you know, that, that I leave a footprint, and, and when I'm gone, people will notice I'm gone. They'll notice that I've been here and I've made a difference. And so, um, like, with Jesus, Satan turned the dial up all the way. You know, look at all these nations. I'll give you power over all. And, and most of us here would say, I, don't, I wouldn't want to do that. Sounds like work to me. But I would love to maybe have my own little nation or some acreage in, you know, or be, I'll be in charge of a river maybe that goes through the whatever. Um, or I'll be in charge of the canoe that goes down the river. But I, I want to make a difference. I want to feel like my life has made a difference. So it goes huge, big, and small. But in any case, um, this is up to me to make this happen, that I have some sort of purpose. This is up to me to make sure that I survive. You know, I have the wherewithal to change rocks into, into bread. Bunny bread, by the way. White bread. Yeah, with mayo on it. Anyway, um, I haven't eaten for a while. Um, or I have, I have the ability to, to make God love me. If, if God won't love my good behavior, if God won't approve of the good things I do and I don't feel his love, then I'll, I'll push the envelope a little bit and, and I'll, I'll put myself in jeopardy and see if he'll save me. So I'll handle snakes or I'll drink poison or I'll, you know, whatever. I'll play in traffic, whatever. I'll do something. To st so I'm going to hold up a hoop. And God needs to jump. If God jumps through the hoop, then I know he loves me. So codependent. So, you know, God says, no, I'm not going to enable your codependence. I don't do that kind of thing. But isn't this where we live our lives? That we're always testing each other. Do you really love me? You know, all kinds of little tricks and manipulation. I want to make sure that you love me, so I'm going to hold up a hoop and see if you'll jump through it. Or we, we kill ourselves. Try. It's not enough just to have some bread to eat, but we need extra bread. We need, and we need some more money in the bank to buy extra bread. And we, we work to ensure that we live and, and, and that we matter to somebody and that we have some sort of significance every day. Every day we get, what are you going to do today? I'm going to do these three things. It's what I'm going to do. It's what's important to me. And to a certain extent, we have to pay attention to those things, right? To a certain extent, we have to. But if you'll notice in this temptation, Satan turns the volume up, up on all three. Let's take all of these to the absolute extreme. Like turn stones to bread. Get up on the highest thing, jump off. Look at all the kingdoms and get power. So he's, he's holding all these things out to Jesus. Things that we normally live with, things that we wake up and kind of expect every day. And he looks at Jesus and he says, you know, can I entice you? To, to go way overboard, to artificially create all these things and make it... I don't know if this example works. It, it just went through my mind. But, but have you ever noticed how a pendulum never st stops in the middle? It always swings to extremes. And so I've got to provide bread for myself and my family. Let's go to reasonable. No, 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 no. Let's go to surplus. You know, I need to have... A, a healthy relationship with so-and-so, that would stop in the middle. But no, 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 I want assurances. I want guarantees so the pendulum swings. It, that, this is the way, we're jerks. We're yo-yos. We, we always are going to extremes. It's, it's like uh, Adam and Eve in the garden. And God said, it's good, it's good, it's good. I went over and over and over. He said, it's good, it's good. And the darkness came along and said, you know what? You could improve on good. You know, we don't like the pendulum in the middle. Let's make it swing over toward perfect. Let's get better. You could be more than you are. Perfection was never God's idea, by the way. It was the idea of the dark side. God said it's good. The dark side come, came along and said, you can have perfect. 
let chew on that for a while. So that's kind of what the dark side did with Jesus. You can take what is good and healthy that you have and, and let's push it all to the extreme and see what we can do with this. You know, you can have all this. I'll give it to you. Is, is it kind of coming clear? It was not clear at all in the first service. You're either sharp or I'm more awake. I don't know which it is. Uh, okay, so we've got that much, right? We're not privy to went through what went through Eve's mind in the garden or Adam's mind, either one. All we know is that they saw it. They thought it tasted good. They bought the idea that they could be better, and so they ate the fruit. Boom, boom, boom. So Jesus is faced with this temptation, and we are privy to went through what went through his mind. See what I'm saying? We get to look at what this temptation, his thought process. And so all three times, I don't know if you've ever studied this out. I just did it and thought, because I wanted to know where he got these Old Testament references from, and they kept going back to the same place, all three of them. They all go back to Deuteronomy to a specific incident where, you know, the kids are grumbling and, and they're not trusting God and blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's he, he went back to that incident and it was, it was, I so appreciate the way you read this. Sorry, Jeremy, no offense, but so free. Because it was almost like, it's almost like Jesus was rolling his eyes and saying, really? That, that's the best you can come up with? And so he just, he didn't even turn the pages. He just said, this is all in just one little incident, you know. And he's shooting these things out to Satan and saying, you, know, you, you really don't have a leg to stand on with me. So we don't get the idea that he's gritting his teeth and, and clenching his fists and saying, I will not sin. I will not. I know I can make those stones bread. I will not do it. I will, and sweat coming down. You know, just, you don't get that idea at all. You don't get the idea. Well, let's at least go to the pinnacle. I'm not going to jump, but let's go. You know, let's have a look. You, you don't get this idea at all. Instead, and, and by the way, this is the third point. We're at the third point. We're moving right along today. This is where you get the title of the, or the theme of, the, of what we're talking about today, resolve. Jesus did not resolve not to sin. Jesus resolved to press into the love of his Father and the affection of his Father. And I look at us and I think how much we live life turned around looking backwards, trying to fight the wolves that we think are after us or trying to return to something that we once did or, or felt or enjoyed. We're, and, and Jesus is not looking back. He's not saying, I won't, I won't, I won't. He's saying, I will, I will, I will. His focus is all forward. We've talked about this being a journey. Uh, the, he, I know it says he stayed in the wilderness 40 days, but it's like he passed through the wilderness. He's headed to where he's wanting to go. And I think about the days I wasted, the calories I burned, the emotional and mental energy that I invested in trying not to be bad. How many games are you going to win at basketball playing not to lose? You know, you don't play not to lose. You play to win. And, and yet we play this Christian game. We play it not to lose. You know, I won't sin, I won't do this, I won't do that. Instead of, where am I going? And I remember Wayne used to say all the time, he said, if you're going to fall, fall forward. Your momentum is going that way, not this way. So that if you, yeah, and you're going to fall. We'll all fall. Perfection is a pipe dream. It doesn't exist. Forget it. Don't shoot for it. It's not there. But you're moving toward, I want to press in, to the love of God, the affection of God. I want to hear that voice from heaven that says, that's my boy, that's my girl, I love him, I'm crazy about him. I want to hear that voice. Not that I've earned it, but I want to hear it because I'm listening for it. You see what I'm saying? We don't, God is saying it all the time, we're just not listening. We don't earn it. There's a huge difference. We don't earn God's approval, we just don't hear it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's a huge difference. So you come to the place where you're all ears, all eyes, 
toward God. And then he says, okay, now that I got your attention, let me tell you how I feel about you. I felt this way all along, but you weren't ready to listen because you were doing it all yourself. You're making all your own bread. You're making all your own significance. You're making all your own relationships. Try to make them work. But you ain't been looking at me. You ain't been listening to me. So now, let me tell you how I feel about you. I felt this way the whole time. You're my boy. You're my girl. <clears throat> I debated strongly whether to share this or not. I talked to Robbie about it. I cry a lot, so I'm probably going to cry. So, sorry. So Friday night, I'm looking out and seeing some of y'all. Friday night, I dreamed about some of you. I'm looking out and seeing, I'm not going to tell you who you are. <laughs> that wouldn't be fair. And I dreamed about some of y'all last night. And the whole dream was centered around, I just want to tell you that you're almost there. You've almost reached the point where you really know God loves you. Not here, but here. Where you're living in that love and that experience. That is the sweetest place to live. It's the sweet spot of life. Because now it doesn't matter what other people think about you. It doesn't matter whether you succeed or fail. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. What matters is that you have a God who created you who is crazy about you just the way you are. And he wants so bad for you to hear his voice. You're my boy. You're my girl. I'm crazy about you. I'm so pleased with you. If we're going to talk about resolve, that's what I want us to be resolved to do is not fight evil, but to press into God's love and to listen for it and to look for it and to let it come alive in us. When that happens, you are unstoppable. When that happens, you talk about the dark side running in fear. You scare the you-know-what out of Satan. You scare him to death when you come to the place where you are absolutely free to live in God's love. I don't know what else to say about that. But I will tell you, I'm not a prophet or a son of a prophet, but if my dream is any indication, there are some of you who are right on the cusp of that. You're just right there. Just right there. Just let God love you. Just let him but I got this, but I got, so what? So what? Let him love you right where you're at. This is a great segue. I, I'm so, I suck at details. I'm just going to tell you the details now and get it out of the way. When you come forward, you're supposed to put your offering in there. I forgot that nearly the first time. Everybody's welcome to communion. We're doing the details first, then we're going to get to the meaning of it. Everybody's welcome. Come down that aisle. Correct, we'll have servers up here to receive it. Okay, so let's talk about communion for just a minute, okay? What I think is so cool, and she, she I, I have trashed you all morning. <laughs> Courtney, Courtney had just the right pause. I'm sorry. Who did? Oh, oh, I remember now. No, we ain't going there. We ain't going there, no. We ain't going there. They're gone. And they did a super job. Oh, they did such a good job. Digging a hole. Anyway, they did a super job, but Courtney did like a superior job. <laughs> Who am I? Uh, it sucks to be old. Uh, no, but there was a pause. There's this pause between the very last little verse that says, and then the angels came. And, and God has a, a, a track record there. He has a track record with, with the children of Israel out in the wilderness, with manna every day. Can you think about that? This, this divine provision of physical sustenance. My body will die unless God gives me the bread every day. And then you look at Elijah, who was, I mean, zealous for God, but he crawls under that tree and he wants to commit suicide. And the angel came and brought him bread 
And then Jesus gathered with his disciples at that meal and he gave them bread and he gave them wine. The most basic of basics, we have to have food to survive. And God says in two ways, I'm your food, literal bread and juice, but I am your food, all caps. And I am the only way that you'll survive. I'm the only way that you can live. So take me in physically, which becomes spiritually, which becomes the theme of your life.